Hello, everyone. Welcome to Live in the D in the Green Room. I'm here with the wonderful John Jordan, and it is dry January, so you got to talk to someone all about mocktails. So what's the story? Well, okay, so dry January is about giving up alcohol, mm -hmm. um, but mm. a mocktail can kind of like, you know, let you go there without consuming the the alcohol. This is and th these mocktails that we learned about the taste is so sophisticated it is so you're not just drinking like soda pop or mm -mm. or sparkling water or lemonade this is this, this is, complex. is real like i like this i'm not a big drinker so mm -hmm. to be social sometimes i feel like well if i'm just drinking water yeah it's weird yeah but i'd be really happy with this this is perfect and we learned more have you heard of dry January? Instead of ditching the sugar or carbs to start the new year, some people are saying so long to alcohol. The month-long challenge encourages people to go alcohol-free, but that doesn't mean you can't still enjoy a fancy drink in the form of a mocktail. And so joining us now is Trevor Wheeler. He is the bar manager at the Meeting House in Rochester. Uh, what are you mixing up first for us? All right, well, uh, first of all, the first cocktail we're gonna be doing today is a Healing Word. Um, this is one of our non-alcoholic cocktails that actually uses uh, non-alcoholic spirits, okay. which have really taken on a lot of steam in the past uh, few years. The pandemic definitely opened people's eyes about you know being aware to drinking, okay. and these companies have really stepped up their game. Uh, so the first drink that we're gonna make is kind of like a riff on uh, your French 75. Okay. So we're gonna do a non-alcoholic French 75. So first we're gonna start off with a seed lip. Uh, this is gonna be their garden. Okay. Um, this is gonna be nice and botanical and give us a lot of those like gin notes that you normally get from your gins. Okay. Uh, next, I like to have a little bit of bitter in all my cocktails. And with mocktails, that definitely like helps bring down the sweetness. Okay. A lot of people think that when they think mocktail, they think this is gonna be a sugary drink. They think of that super sweet uh, Shirley Temple. With with an umbrella in it. Yep, yeah, yeah. every time. So we're gonna like take those. this and we're gonna use this to kind of like bitter it out a little bit. And this is uh, gonna mo mimic like an Aperol. So okay. this is one of my favorite uh, like mocktail so ingredients. It's sweet-ish. Yes, it is definitely sweet-ish. And mm -hmm. then next we're gonna take some lemon juice. Okay. And then a little bit of a peach syrup that we made with um, a little bit of Mas yeah. Madagascar vanilla syrup in it. Okay, fancy. This sounds all amazing right. already. Oh, it is fantastic. And then we're gonna just take that, and we're gonna shake all those ingredients up. Okay. And then we're gonna have our glass that has a little bit of soda water already in it. Mm -hmm. And then we're just gonna throw that on top. Okay. And it's gonna be that nice, refreshing cocktail. Smells good too. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. And then we're gonna garnish it with a little dehydrated lemon. Okay. And uh, let's see, we're moving on to, well, I, sh I can sip this. Oh yeah, absolutely, uh, go right ahead. You go on to the second one. Yeah, wonderful. So the next drink that we're gonna do is something that you can actually do when you're not doing dry January, and you can just substitute the water for vodka. So we're gonna be doing our lavender lemonade, okay. um, and then we're gonna take equal parts, lemon juice, mm -hmm. lavender syrup, With the lavender syrup is super easy to make. You can make this at home. It's just like making a simple syrup. Okay. And then you take dehydrated lavender and then you just steep it for like 20 minutes, strain it out, and then you have a beautiful lavender syrup that you can use anytime for okay. either le lemonades and whatnot. So it's a little, it's more sophisticated uh, taste with, uh, with notes that are, that are other than like just straight lemonade. Yes, yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna make like uh, an upscale lemonade, if Got you will. It. We're gonna shake that up. And then we're gonna take that and then strain it over to some fresh ice. Okay. It's got that nice light lavender color to the lemon. Well, I'm gonna have to, yeah, I'm gonna have to. You can definitely drink these these. ones. <laughs> there and you go. Um, and then when you're not doing dry January, you can always substitute the water and then do like an ounce and a half of your favorite vodka, gin, whatever you'd like. I don't know which one I like. <laughs> Um, so what's the mocktail? You have a menu. Yes, we have an entire mocktail menu. We, we also do a low ABV BV menu. Okay. Uh, we kind of have a little bit of something for everybody on ours. Um, so you have like our, this is our blackberry mule right mm -hmm. here, which is like a mule, but uh, with a blackberry syrup. 
the cherry bomb. That is a top shelf Shirley Temple where we make our own grenadine. Wow. And then, of course, use that Detroit uh, ginger ale. It's uh, perfect for it. Yep. Verbs, um, maybe. And then right? we have a okay. non alcoholic uh, espresso martini. Okay. All right, and so, but you also serve food. Oh, yeah, we have plenty of food. <laughs> um, our chef has uh, created us a fantastic menu. Um, we do everything that you would typically see in a uh, Michigan style restaurant with elevated. Okay. Um, you're in Rochester. We are in downtown Rochester. Okay. Um, where you can come see us from now until January 21st. The lights are still up. So you can still keep on that holiday cheer just for a little bit longer. All right. That sounds good. Um, well, I, uh, I'm going to be sipping here. <laughs> All right, so once you've got your cocktail recipe down, you might be inspired for a little magic in your life, as in Jason magic. How does that guy do it? No idea. And here's what I like about Jason. Mm -hmm. He's just, he, he lightens everything up. It's not, you know, it's not like, take me so seriously. Yeah. And he's really fun. He is super fun. And we had fun with him today, too. Well, to make 2023, I can't believe I'm still saying that, more magical, we've got you covered. Uh, yeah. Um, our friend of yes. Live in the D, magician and comedian, he is very funny, and all-around entertainer, <laughs> Jason Ma J Jason Magic. Woo! Mocktails! Yeah. It's it's back mocktails! With right. You guys validate? <laughs> I, got, I got John's keys here. He's we'll get you an Uber. He was like, he was joking that he doesn't think that. Those were actual mocktails. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So let me tell you more about Jason Magic. Oh my! So do you have any New Year's resolutions, Jason Magic? Absolutely. I'm I'm gonna make a vision board. Okay. For 2023 success. Okay. That's that's what I'm gonna do. No, I don't have any resolutions. You don't nothing. Too hard to stick to that. No, no, no. Yeah, Just gonna do are. tricks. They are. They are. So what kind of magical moments do you have for us today? Oh my what gosh! Do I ever? Like well, this. everybody <laughs> always reaches out and they say, "Why is Tati always so afraid?" And it's because she doesn't believe. That I she, believe. that she is magic. Oh, okay. So you I, are I magic. Believe. So listen, I'm going to make you a magician, okay? okay? You think it's all me. You think it's all like spiritual, supernatural and stuff. So here, we're going to do something. We're going to do a little simple game. Red, white, blue, yellow, orange, green. Do you know what this is? A Rubik's Cube? Actually, it's a waste of $250. Oh. <laughs> Went to one of those gaming places, three hours of shooting basketball, and this is all I got okay. right there. Anyway. I thought I was funny, John. I thought it was funny. Yeah, laughing on the inside. Okay, <laughs> so here's the deal. Red, white, blue, yellow, orange, green. You name a color, it's the same one I'm thinking of. You're doing the trick. Are you ready? Yeah. On the count of three. Mm -hmm. Ready? One, two, three. Red. Red. See, he just, but that was, you. I no, you. but I was, seeing. I knew you Let's were going to do, do that because that's what you do. You're always unhappy <laughs> with this. So look, here's what I'll do. I'll look away to okay. keep myself honest. Right. I won't look. All right. And then you flip. Uh -huh. So John can see your color, put okay. it on top, okay. and then cover it up. And okay. then I'll turn around right. and tell you what I was thinking. It's going to be the exact same one. All right. Watch the look on her face, okay? Eyes okay. are closed, looking off camera. Tell me when you have a color on top. We have a color on top and I'm covered. Are you sure? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I told you that the eyes are the window of the soul, would you believe me? I would. And would you also believe me if you look into my eyes that my eyes are blue? Yes. The same color that you picked? How did you do that? It's what I do, people. Did. Come on. Blue. It's what I do. That's it. So that anyway, was magic. See, you, you think did I, it. You think no? You think I'm scared because no, no, I, I you're don't not believe scared. you're you just, good. No, look, John, and give me a number between one and five in my pocket. Watch this. Ready? Okay. What is it? Four. For what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that looked like three right there. That was a Yuri Geller right there. That's okay. Never mind. <laughs> anyway, let's talk some more. What else can we do? No. So here's the thing. Yeah. I, I, let's just be clear. He's good people. Durr. So when you see me all freaked out and wanting to run in the opposite direction, it's because he really did whatever sleight of hand, whatever thing he just did, is really, you can really do it well too. done. And he is really popular. He is. You want? That's what, I, what, right. what do I do? Lined Sorry. up to see your show. Look at me. That's, That's right. You, you have live shows at Janetti's Hole in the Wall in Northville. Mm -hmm. They're a nice way to enjoy a dinner and a show. What are those events like? I've been to it. It was a lot of fun. Have you ever slept in the morning and woke up to an ice cream sundae? No. It's phenomenal. Okay, that so that would be the equivalent. So I guess the short answer is <laughs> like it's phenomenal. That, I like that analogy. No, I do. I do a little. Uh, uh, I do a little bit of magic and comedy and a lot of improv uh, improvisation. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's a big word for me. Um, <laughs> and I, I mess around with the audience and just kind of cracking jokes. And every show is a little different from yes. the last because no two shows are the same. You've been there. It was. It was you such left, a blast. You just spooked out. She I was, was like, spooked oh out, God. but I had a great time. We had an absolutely great time. I had a fabulous. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to come. <laughs> All right. So where can people learn more so John and others can come yeah. and, and see your shows and enjoy You Jason can Magic. check out, uh, if you're interested in coming to Gennetti's, their Seven Course Dinner Theater. Uh, you can check them out at Gennetti's.com. You can follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Jason Magic. Or you can just Google Jason Magic, J-A-S-E-N-M-A-G-I-C. There you go. J-A-S-E-N. Yeah. There you go. J-A-S-E-N. Yeah. With an E. And then I'll just, I'm all over the place. Yeah. Yes. He's, yeah. he's awesome. Check I know why I'm so excited. That Check mocktail is starting to take place <laughs> Starting right to now. kick in? It's yeah. Like, all right. So I don't know if you've heard about this Showtime limited series called George and Tammy. Mm -hmm. you, you familiar with it? Yep. Oh, yeah. Are you I, a fan? Well, yeah. Tammy Wynette, you know, she was the queen of country. Mm -hmm. I mean, Loretta Lynn might have, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. vied for the title, but... She was really an iconic figure. That's right. Standing by her man. Yeah. Like the song. Well, yeah. I, had, <laughs> I had a chance to talk with Jessica Chastain and Michael Shannon about the series. And, you know, they just gave us a little bit more info. It was good. They were country music's power couple. George Jones and Tammy Wynette had over 30 number one country songs between them. Wynette is best remembered for her hit, Stand By Your Man, and the Showtime series George and Tammy, starring Academy Award winner Jessica Chastain, and Oscar nominee Michael Shannon follows the rise and fall of country music's king and queen. Take a look. Your hands together for George Jones. You live in a fast world. Fast is the only speed I know. Understand me, Wynette? Mm-hmm. Will you make me an honest man? You make me an honest woman? You bet. Put on solo stuff, it's flatline. I should have done more to stop it. You can't stop her unless her beauty. You can't bear happiness. Nobody wants me happy. And we want to welcome the stars, Jessica Chastain and Michael Shannon. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. Yep. Well, George and Tammy follows this couple's complicated love story. What might surprise viewers about their backstory? Oh, I was, there was so much about Tammy Wynette that surprised me. Um, the whole history of what happened to her before she showed up in Nashville. You know, she showed up, a divorced woman with three kids on her hip, determined to become a, a, a girl country singer, which back then it was really a difficult thing to be, especially if you were divorced. Uh, she was institutionalized. She got electric shock therapy. I mean, all of the incredible things that she survived and went through. And then the love that she had for George, even before they ever met. She carried around a book with all the lyrics from every song he ever sang in it. Um, and, and yeah, he definitely was her favorite artist and then became her favorite person. Bella. <laughs> Now, Jessica, you won the Oscar for Best Actress for your portrayal of Tammy Faye Baker in the eyes of Tammy Faye. Now, what attracted you to the role of this other Tammy, Tammy Wynette? Well, I signed on to this in 2011 before there was even a script. Um, I, was at, I was approached and asked, you know, someone just said, you should play Tammy Wynette. I was like, oh, okay. And then, you know, they were making it off of jo uh, Georgette Jones's book, um, you know, the daughter of George and Tammy. And I stayed on over this decade uh, because I knew how important it was to tell the story, knew it meant a lot to Georgette. And uh, there were a lot, we had a lot of false starts, but we absolutely ended up um, where we needed to be. All right, now this question is for both of you. George and Tammy had distinctive voices and you both actually sang in this series. What was it like to prepare for that? stressful. Yeah, it was pretty grueling, you know. I mean, we, we took it real seriously. We weren't just going to show up and, like, wing it, you know. Uh, we had a vocal coach, a singing coach from Nashville named Ron Browning, and uh, we worked with him for months before we even started shooting anything. And then we went down to Nashville and did some uh, pre-records of the songs, uh, just in case we weren't able to pull it off on the day, but we tried to shoot, uh, capture everything live uh, on camera, and I think for the most part yeah, we live. succeeded, yeah. The season finale of this six-part so Showtime series is this Sunday. What can fans look forward to? 
Oh, uh, the silver fox right here, man. <laughs> yeah, I get old. Oh, yeah, we both do. I mean, I had to lose a lot of weight for the finale. I'm in a, a uh, red spandex um, jazzercise rodeo outfit mm -hmm. <laughs> at one point that we sing Golden Ring. I am, too. <laughs> They're matching. Oh, it sounds Unitard. very exciting. I want to thank yeah. both of you so much for joining yeah. us this morning. Again, you can catch the drama series George and Tammy on Showtime. The finale is this Sunday at 9 p.m. So it's January, you might be doing dry January, got your New Year's might resolutions. Be. Might be. <laughs> yeah. Is it really? It's an option. <laughs> right. But you know, everyone's got these New Year's resolutions, especially as it pertains to their health. Yeah. But one big thing that we need to do is reduce our stress. Yeah. So, well, think about that. How are you doing with the stress? I'm, well, better now that this, you know, mocktail is making me think that I'm having an actual mm. cocktail. Yes. But I like that Dr. Perrin. Yeah, he was great. He was great. And he keeps it simple. That's what he's all about. Right. It's not, he's not intimidating. Mm -hmm. Super fun. Taskmaster. Yes. Stop stressing. <laughs> Well, getting healthy is one of the top New Year's resolutions every single year. But one of the major components of excellent health is stress. Now, it's something that we can't avoid for the most part, but the consequences can be serious. However, there is something that we can do to manage it for optimal health. Optimum health. So joining us to lay out his uncomplicated steps to help us reduce stress is Dr. Chris Perrin, author of The Simple Plan, Five Ways to Reduce Stress. Doctor, thank you for joining us this morning. Good to see you again. Great to see you, Taddy. Good morning. Good morning. So you say that you wrote the book to make stress reduction simple. So why is it important to simplify the steps? Simplifying steps make steps happen. <laughs> because in the <laughs> end, everything's a neat idea. But unless we can put it into the practice and actually make it be a benefit to ourselves, then it really is no good. It's just it's just an idea. That's right. Well, let's get into your fresh, which is, uh, you know, F-R-E-S-H. These are bullet points on reducing stress. And let's start with F for food. Absolutely. So food. One thing that a lot of people don't understand is our body doesn't crave food. It craves nutrients. It craves fuel. And so if we stuff junk into our bodies, then our body keeps asking for more and more and more. And we stay hungry and we just get all these toxins. So two points I wanna highlight. One, Mediterranean diet anchored by olive oil is really the biggest thing that you wanna to hit towards. It, Mediterranean diet shown to be, and it's a lifestyle diet, not a fad diet. It's fish, lean meat, uh, lots of vegetables, very low on pasta and bread actually, and try to keep the alcohol light as well. And when you give your body good nutrients, it actually makes your body have better energy. And it's less of a burden from putting basically drive through junk into our bodies, which actually add to our stress. Stress isn't just emotional. It's actually physical. And taking care of our insides is the easiest target. All right. Good to know. Food could stress us out, too. All right. The next one is rest, which we can all use more of. What are your suggestions for this? So with rest, as science is more than proven that seven to nine hours average sleep a night is what makes you live long. And so we got to target that. Now, the easiest way to get that in place is to choose what is your ideal wake up time. And then you just reverse engineer it. So I need to get up at six in the morning. That's my average. And I'm shooting for that eight hours. So what does that mean? 10 o'clock at night is my targeted bedtime. And then what you want to do once you have your bedtime is take about a 30 minute hour window before that to establish a routine. Uh, you might have a little bit of tea in there. You do not want caffeine, coffee, alcohol, have one of those mocktails instead, uh, but you wanna let things settle, turn off the electronics, but basically purposely go, you know what? It's nine o'clock, I need to start working my way towards getting to sleep. All right, now let's talk about E, which is for exercise. You can say that this can be as simple as walking. You got it. And walking every day is the goal. Uh, you can do more than that. But again, keep it basic. One little trick that was taught to me by an Ironman triathlete lady, world ranked years ago, is pick out something fun. Get a new pair of shoes like mine here. Or maybe you get a new outfit, a little gadget. Just something that keeps it exciting. And get motivated. But getting started is the hard part. Keeping it going is the easy part. Yeah. So beginning of the year, just get it rolling, but shoot for every day. And if you get most days, they're going to be doing really well for yourself. Okay, now we have under a minute now, so I want to get to the S and the H. Tell us about those very quickly. 
Sure, I'm gonna do H first actually. So H is hydration. You wanna be drinking three times your body weight in ounces in water every single day. Our body runs off of water and our nervous system is electricity. It needs the water to keep us healthy and keep our brains functioning. The S though is my favorite, that's the self-love. This is a journal, this is one of my favorites. And especially at the beginning of the year slash end of last year, what I target is a gratitude journal. Each day, I suggest you write down three things you are grateful for that day. But at right now, at this moment in time, when we beat ourselves up for what we didn't do, I want you to look backwards this past year and write as long a list as you can of all the things you accomplished that you did great so that you can actually give yourself a little bit of love because everybody did a lot of good things, but we're targeted towards focusing on the bad. So we have to make ourselves really look towards the good. I agree with you. And I started my own gratitude journal here on the show just the other day. So thank you for these wonderful tips. How can people learn more about you and purchase your book, uh, The Simple Plan? Absolutely, thank you. And so The Simple Plan, it is best-selling book. It's on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. I am Chris Perrin, Dr. Chris Perrin, and ChrisPerrin.com as well. There's actually some resources where I show some additional basic exercises, some cooking videos actually, but just wanna show you that being healthy can really be very simple. It sure can. Dr. Perrin, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for hanging out, John. Well, let's toast together. Yes, so fun. We'll see you guys tomorrow, 11 a.m. on Live in the D. This is our lunch. Yeah. <laughs>